Okay, cute animal, check. Script for what I'm gonna say, check. Sad looking face, okay. Okay, three things to make the perfect apology video. I got this. <sighs> Hello everyone, it's Editing Jack here. Just wanna start off by apologizing for yesterday's antics. Um, it was unacceptable what I did with the van. As you can see, I've started to repay my debt. The dance board's gone, tactics board's gone. Where the magic happens, it's gone. And not now, bud. Not now. Sorry, every he's he's asking for attention. Look, mate, it's not not the time right now. I'm trying to record an apology video for YouTube. I'm trying to make it up to Jack, you know. I'm trying to patch things up. I'm trying to smooth things over. I need your help to do that, though. And this is very serious. I'd never ask you guys to do anything like this, and I will never ask you guys to ever do anything like this ever again. And uh, this isn't one for the algorithm ultras. No, I'm not. I don't need you to like the video, although it would be nice. Comment. It's not what's needed. Something really important to Jack, I think, actually. He needs you to go and follow him on TikTok. I know what you're thinking. Is this some kind of joke? No, it's 100% serious. Top of the description. It's a TikTok. It's at work the space. If you happen to be on there with my personal fan base, with the rapport I have with you guys, the viewers, the least I could do was try and pass on some of that love to Jack. And uh, there's a, there's quite a big cup game today, I believe. So I'm going to leave you guys to enjoy that. Hopefully I've done a good job of editing it. And uh, I suppose I'll run the intro now. How's it going, folks? And welcome back. It's episode number 18 of Park 2 Primera. Today, we are back with something big and something a little bit unexpected. We have gone on a cup run, everyone. We've made it to the fourth round of the Copa del Rey, and we've been rewarded for our efforts with a game against Atletico Madrid. Yeah, it doesn't get much bigger than that, does it? I mean, this is probably the biggest match we've had so far in terms of during our leadership period here at Racing. Hopefully, we're going to give them a good little game. And well, since you were last here... A fair bit's happened, but before we get into what's happened with me in my little football bubble, let's talk about the wider footballing world in this database and this save game, because Norway have won the World Cup. Yeah, I don't know either. They beat France. Of course, this is the Qatar World Cup that's been played in the winter, and as you can see here, they won 2-1 in the final. Um, you could say they got a little bit lucky. I'd go as far as to say they got very lucky, but fair play, Norway. You've done well. Maybe one of those football manager things, but if you're a betting man, if you trust football manager, maybe stick a fiver on Norway to win the World Cup in a couple of years' time. And while a little closer to home, we've played a lot of matches and the transfer window is open. It is, in fact, the last week of the transfer window. No one new has come in yet. That will hopefully change, otherwise things have gone very, very wrong. And well, let's talk about the transfer dealings. In terms of the ins... There's none yet. In terms of the outs, uh, well, Simeone has left us. Di Vicente and Reco have also departed. In At the end, we got just over a million pounds for all of them, which I think is a really good sum of money. Di Vicente wasn't originally going to go to Deportivo, but he turned down a few contract offers. We offered him out a couple more times, and in the end, Deportivo was the club we settled on. We sold him for £500,000, which, to be honest, a little bit disappointed we couldn't get more, but, of course, Deportivo, not a divisional rival, on his debut for them, he got a red card. So uh, I think we did a really good bit of business there. And it's some significant money that hopefully we're going to be able to reinvest. Now, the reason I say hopefully reinvest is because we only get 15% of our transfer revenue made available to us. And a lot of that's gone into the wage budget. In this new league that we play in, there is actually a rule that there is a minimum wage that players have to have on full-time dealings. £1,400. Um, there was a couple of players in the B team and in the under-19 who are youngsters. I don't want to lose for nothing, but because of this kind of minimum wage, they had expectations which were a little bit above what I really wanted to be giving them. Players like Goria, for example, now on £2,000 a week. I mean, he's laughing to the bank. He was on a few hundred quid not that long ago. Um, but yeah, as a result, that's eating up some money. Um, but we are still trying to get some bits done, and we're doing that via selling some players and hopefully signing some players. In terms of the outs, it looks like Lopez is going to leave us. Now, Lopez was a really hot prospect when he generated at the club a few years ago. 
I've been a little bit underwhelmed by his development. He's got full determination and he's got really an ambitious personality. So I don't see him as a player who's likely to fulfill his potential. Now at 17 years old, don't get me wrong, he's got a long, long future ahead of him. Hence the fact we've got a sell-on clause. But in the end, when a £450,000 bid came in for him with 30% of any future profit, decided to take them up on that offer. And elsewhere, you'll notice Cedric also leaving for a similar sum of money. Ultimately, with Cedric, he's not played nearly enough to justify his wages. It's a few hundred thousand pounds. He wants to leave the club. I think it's just nice to end things amicably rather than hold him against his will and end up with a bit of a battle on our hands. That said, with those couple of players leaving, I am looking to get some business done on the ins. And while Rodrigo Fernandez is a man I would really, really like to pick up from Sporting, uh, he's currently transfer listed with them, you can see, for £9.5 million. But we've agreed to sign him at the end of his contract. I'm hoping that once we can officially get that bit of business done, he will be happy and, well, commit to joining us permanently, maybe a little bit earlier. It might be one of those transfers where we're waiting to the summer, which would be unfortunate. Ultimately, though, Really, really great defensive midfielder, 21 years old, loads of potential, has had a few issues with longer term injuries, but I'm hoping they're not going to rear their head too much. And well, he's not the only sporting man we're looking at, because Chimiti is also currently on loan from sporting, playing for, I'm not going to say that team name, just to save us all, but he's playing for a lower league team in Portugal where he's had a good start. I've offered to take over the loan. They've agreed to it. And it's worth noting his contract at his current club expires at the end of the year. In an ideal world, we get him in on loan. If I like what I see, I can swoop in, maybe offer him a contract and sign him permanently for the end of the year. Um, either way, he could end up being a super useful player just to get on loan for the rest of this season because there has been a little bit of turnover in the squad department, especially with so many players leaving. Now, talking about players leaving, of course, Cedric hasn't left us yet, um, but the current squad size, as you can see here, is 24 people, which is very, very small by my own personal standards. That said... Given the fact we're not playing many games beyond, obviously, the league games and the singular cup we play in, there isn't as much of a necessity, I suppose, for a larger squad. All in all, I'm very happy. Of course, the one player who I desperately wanted to sign was Reese Williams. I thought, you know what? Worst case scenario, Liverpool trigger his optional contract extension of a year. And we'll loan him for another year. Best case scenario, we sign him per permanently. In the end, it turned out there was a ultra worst case scenario, and that is that Leganes have just signed him. So yeah, he's going to be sticking it out in Spain, staying here, but going to a team in the league above us. That happens at the end of the season. So Reese Williams, we're going to enjoy you whilst we can as a centre-back. That is going to leave me with a little bit of a headache when it comes to picking up a new player next summer to play at centre-back. Not a position I thought we were going to have to perhaps look for a replacement. And I thought Reese Williams was the one. So that's a little bit about what's been going on off the pitch since we were last here. But on the pitch... Things look pretty rosy all in all. Of course, we have had a winter break. We've also had a little bit of a cup run. And in fact, since we were last here, we've played nine games in all competition, three of them in the cup. Uh, just to touch upon them really quickly, against Tarazona, we won 1-0. Lower league opposition should have beaten them more convincingly. I mean, we got the win. I'll be happy about it. We played Huesca as well, who we beat 3-1. This was a good result against a team in our division. In this game, Torre picked up man of the match. Good little team performance. Good to see Hardy getting on the score sheet. Bicho and Mujica also there. And then, as you can see here against Pomfredina in the cup, we beat them 4-3. So, three wins. None of them mega convincing. This 4-3 win was... I mean, it was it was something. I, I nearly came back for it as a live com. There's a small part of me that regrets not doing that. As you can see here, they equalised in the 89th minute. Just Andy then scored a minute later. Pablo Torre in this game scored in the first minute and actually set a record for the fastest goal scored at the club, breaking the record that was set in the very previous game in the league. So now that we've talked about the Copa del Rey, I'm just going to hide it from this screen now so we can focus on the league, the thing that really matters. And suddenly... I feel like when you remove the green of the cup, it doesn't look all that impressive anymore, does it? Against Girona, who were managerless, though, we got a 4-0 win. This was a good result. They didn't have a manager, though. Off the back of this, they did offer me a job interview, which was kind of them. I turned them down on it. Um, but, you know, 4-0 win. Mihika got a goal. In fact, he got two. Hardy got a goal, and he's been in some really good form lately, playing himself into the first team, as you're going to come to see. So the next game we had was away against Tenerife, and unfortunately, it wasn't much of a party. In the end, we ended up losing this one 2-1. Pablo Torre had a good game. Williams, again, having a really solid game at the back. I really cannot understate 
how important his influence has been and how big a blow it is not to be able to sign him permanently. Elsewhere, Machado had a good performance in this game, although when you lose, it doesn't really matter if your goalkeeper had a good game or not. And well, off the back of that game, we came away with two 3-0 wins either side of the winter break. The first was against Real Oviedo. In this game, Bicho got a hat-trick. Two were from the penalty spot, one from open play. Good to see him back at his best. He's been finding a little bit of form as of late. For two goals, as you can see here, in his last five games. Average rating of 7.02. Uh, I realise this includes, I think, friendlies in it. So it doesn't really mean anything. But he's been doing okay. And well, the win against Albacete was a really great result because they have been going so well at the top of the table. And I thought, off the back of that, we're going to get going. We didn't get going. Against Pomfredina, as you can see here, we drew nil, nil. And then we lost against Malaga, 1-0. They were down a man for a lot of this game. The fact we couldn't capitalise on that is bitterly disappointing. You can see here, it was a game where we played very well. We had a lot of the ball. But much like the last time we played Malaga, where I feel like I said the exact same things at the start of the season... We didn't get the win. Anyway, in terms of what all those results mean for the league table, as you can see here, we are now in ninth place. Uh, Castilla and Barcelona B doing us a bit of a favour. They can't be promoted, but they're currently in what would be the playoff spots. As a result right now, we are one point away from the playoff positions. The team ahead of us is Real Oviedo, who we did beat. Albacete, who we also beat ahead of us. You can see both those teams in the last five games have had an atrocious run of form. Um, I'm hoping that we're going to keep some good form going in the league and that we'll be coming back for some playoffs later on this year. I think the most notable thing really is no one's really pulling away from anyone else. Even, you know, Real Zaragoza in second. Six defeats, five draws, only 12 wins in 23. Um, yeah, this is a league where there aren't teams running away with it at the top. Everyone is slipping up. It's kind of a case of who's going to slip up the least. And well, we're certainly going to hope that today we're not going to be slipping up. We're taking on Atletico. Of course, we are going to be playing at home because in the Copa del Rey, if you're the lower seeded team, if you play in a lower league, you get to be at home for the cup game. So maybe we can use that to our advantage. You can see here just looking at La Liga, um, Atleti actually won the league the last two years. They've had two really, really good years. Unfortunately, it's all kind of gone to pot since then. Um, Real Madrid currently top of the league and unbeaten. Um, still early days, though, I suppose. So they could still end up winning the league for a third year in a row. We're, of course, going to hope that we can do something against them here in the Copa del Rey, which, incidentally, Real Madrid won last year. Now, in terms of team news, a little bit of rotation going to be needed. We can bring Pablo Torre back into the team, though. He was resting last game just due to the fixture congestion. Needed to keep things rotated. Of course, we are a couple of centre-bids lighter than we once were, but at least for now, I've been playing just Andy as the ball-winning midfielder in our team, alongside Pablo Martinez, who, as you can see here, has now got 10 games to his name. He hasn't got any better in those 10 games. His 6.86 average rating. I think kind of implies the fact that he turns up, he does okay. But I was hoping for a little bit more from him when we signed him. Along the back, unfortunately for us, Herrero is coming back from injury. Fitness test isn't required, but I'm not going to risk him in today's game. So Lopez starts there. And at centre-back, a little bit of a problem. Rojas is currently out injured. Uh, of course, he would normally be Rhys Williams' his partner in crime. Matic, who's then our next best centre-back, he's also out injured. So as a result, Oscar Hill. Yeah, he's still around. He's still kicking. He's only 27. I thought he was way older than that. Um, our kind of centre-back of the first season, a player who's a good backup, I suppose. He's going to get thrown into the mix today. Hopefully, he's going to do okay against an Atleti team who are pretty blooming good. Up top, we're going to go with Bicho, Torre, Hardy and Mejica. Worth noting that with this front four... All of them have played pretty well as of late. You can see here in terms of average ratings for the entire season, Mahika's up there with a 7.26. Bicho had a bit of a rough start due to his injury, but he's come back into some form. Pablo Torre, maybe been a tad disappointing by his own incredibly high standards, but he's continuing to develop the 19-year-old. There's not been any renewed interest in him this January transfer window, so... I think we're good for now. We're not going to have to worry about losing them, I don't think, in this last week of the window. But either way, let's submit our team for today's game. Of course, this is a bit of a free hit. It's the Copa del Rey. We're taking on a top-quality La Liga team. In terms of their team, I was hoping they might rotate things. They've got Luis Suarez, João Felix, uh, Condogbia is in their team alongside Koke and Saul. They've got, I mean, it's just a full-strength team. They could, have, they could have been nicer to me, couldn't they? But, well, we're going to try and cause a cup upset here. Hopefully, we can just show something positive. I'm not really going into this game expecting a win, necessarily. Really, I'd like to see us just do battle with them and go toe-to-toe. -to -toe. 
Let's show them that we're up for a fight. That, that would be nice at the very least. After last episode, there was a, a temptation to come back and just try and find a game that we were expected to win to, you know, make me feel good about myself. This game definitely ain't it. This is going to be a game where we're underdogs. It's going to be tough. Mm, our fingers crossed we can, you know, just do well here. Give a good account of ourselves. That's all I really want. And, uh, well, Felix is through early on. This is, this, this could be bad. Okay. Why do the mark? It's okay. We're fine. I mean, we've got to throw in in a dangerous area here after six minutes. We're, we're not, we're not going to be pushed over. Marta, there's edge of the box. Just Andy's there. And he's just banged it into the top corner. Oh my god, you can keep your nickname, mate. And Martinez gets another assist. We've replaced our centre mids. We got rid of a couple of them in January. We've replaced them with players who were already here. I know, it's a genius play. What an effort that is, though, by Just Andy. Smashes it into the top corner. Pick that out, Atleti. We're in the lead. All right, Beecho's off the pitch injured. That does scare me slightly, but what scares me more, perhaps, is the fact there's a highlight and they're bringing the ball forward. Although we have it now. Hardy, who's been... I want to say a bit of a revelation as of late out on the right-hand side. He's been scoring a lot of goals and, uh, well, hopefully he's going to score more here as Suarez smashes it in. But no mercy. I mean, we were in the lead for, I think, by my watch, about eight and a half minutes. That's that's okay, right? So just tell me it's okay. Um, I mean, what can we say about this, really? Uh, Luis Diaz has ran through, plays it to Suarez. He smashes it at Machado. It looks like Machado's trying to dodge the ball there, which, to be fair, if Luis Suarez smashed a ball in my direction, I might try and dodge it too, but I'm not getting paid to get in the way of it. So it's a little bit disappointing. And we're into another highlight. I mean, it's an entertaining game at the very least. Martinez, one assist already. Plays through Mejica. What a ball that is, Mejica. You've got to. He goes around the keeper. He finds the back of the net. We're back in the lead. Oh my word, what a finish that is to go round the keeper. But by the way, Martinez, you you sell you should be celebrating with the lads. They should be encircling Martinez, not Mejica, because that pass there on his left foot is superb. Mejica takes it down, goes round Jan or Black, and puts it into the bottom corner. We're two one up. Enjoy it while it lasts. So savor it. Maybe it'll be more than eight minutes this time. We've not made it past eight minutes yet. There's another highlight. Hardy. <laughs> Pablo. Could we get a third? No, I'm getting carried away here. Carassa, though. I mean, Mejica, he's not He's not that quick. Can't get on the end of Carassa's pass there. And uh, I will say now, Carassa's been very disappointing at right back this year. Not sure I'll be renewing his lo loan for another year and keeping him in even longer term. Um, at least as a starter. Probably the kind of player we'll look to replace. I'm now sat wondering if his loan actually asks, lasts another year. It may well do. Beacho. Mihika's that. I mean, what is happening? What is happening here? We cannot win against the teams in our own division. We're 3-1 up against a full-strength Atletico Madrid. How should I feel? Lopez in for Herrero at left-back. Winding back the years. Beacho dinks it. I mean, Popov. Questionable defending by the centre-back there. But the finish. Top draw into the bottom corner. Could it happen? I say, could it happen? There's a free kick straight away. But this is like the seventh highlight of the game. We're 30 minutes in. This could be a long episode. I'm sorry, Editing Jack. You're going to have a lot of work to do here. Oscar Hill to Reese Williams, who's on a booking. Don't get sent off again, Reese. I can't deal with that. Hardy's bringing it forward. He's got Carassa on the right. He might go on his own here. He might go on his own here. He tries to go on his own and it's blocked. But, I mean, it's, it's not out of the woods yet. Let's try and box him in. Let's try and turn over possession. Raul Felix with it, lumps it to Suarez, right, Machado, it's your moment. I, I don't know if he's, I don't, is, he, is he aware that he's a goalkeeper? Maybe that's the, maybe he doesn't know what he is. You know when you see those weird rescue videos where like, I don't know, a dog is raised by a group of ducks and it acts like a duck. Maybe Machado grew up around dodgeball players. It's the only explanation I can come up with for what this is in goal. Beat show. Bit, bit long range for a free kick shot here. And, well, I'm not sure if that was a shot or a cross. Whichever it was, it was rubbish. Oblak now has it for them, and he's going to distribute it over to the left back. 3-2 after 37 minutes. Five goals in this game, if you can't count. It's a lot of goals. I'm hoping the next is going to be in our favour. Machado to heal. Oh, my. I probably shouldn't blame Machado for that one. 
But I, I, it's probably Oscar Hill's fault. <laughs> Whose fault is it? What is this? Have you seen... I don't know if I've seen a worse own goal at a worse moment than that this year in Football Manager. We were 3-1 up. I was having a great time. Ten minutes later, it's 3-3, and that is one of the worst own goals you'll see in Football Manager this year. Okay, so at the break, it is 3-3. I think on the whole, I'm happy. Other than the way in which we've just conceded that third goal, I'm going to tell the players I'm not happy, though, and I believe they've got what it takes. We're looking for a sea of bright green. Okay, well, we've got it with the attacking players, and given the fact the defenders don't look like defending, we're probably going to be relying on them to do stuff. So maybe if they're the ones reacting best, it's for the best. As Bicho has a free kick. Oh, my word, he's hit the post from so far away. Oh, my, I can't believe what. We're giving them a fight. That's all you can really say here. We are giving them a battle. Martinez, Bicho's there. He's found the back of the net. Oh, my word. Martinez is on a 7.7. He's never played so well at centre mid. Throw in by Carassa, Pablo with it to Martinez, whips it back post, and Bicho's there, nods it into the bottom corner. He might have a knock. He's staying on the pitch. Hardy's had a bad game out on the right. You know what, Hardy, it's nothing personal, but I'm just going to bring in Mbuku, mate. In fact, no, I'm not. I'm bringing in Kabir. Kabir scores on off the bench. He's going to prove that theory yet again today. I fear we may need him to do it again because they're on the attack here. Luis Diaz on the near side. I mean, well well defended, I think. We it's, it, we dealt with it. It's for corner. We're fine. Ball whipped in. Soul free header. Machado, he held on to that one. That's the kind of highlight where normally I'd edit it out of a video. Going to make sure editing Jack leaves that one in so you can see he has actually stopped the ball today. Soul with the ball on the far side. Now with Milenkovic. Lots of options in the middle, including Koke. He tries to play it through to Luis Suarez. Diaz is there. It's blocked. It falls back to Suarez, who's looking for the hat-trick now, of course. Goes over. We remain in the lead. I mean, we've been in the lead three times in this game. The previous two times, we've given up that lead rather abruptly. Going to hope that we can hold on to this one for a tiny bit longer. Drow Felix on the far side, running, running it forward. Do not foul him. Milinkovic in the wide area to Koke, hits it, it's blocked, it falls back to him, Luis Diaz is there, Machado can't stop it, we won't blame him for that one, it was a good finish in the end by Luis Diaz, um, they've just got better quality than us, it, it's it's a game where I don't think either defence has shone, shall, shall we say that? I think that's a fair review of what we've witnessed here, I mean could Machado have done better? I don't think so, I'll let him off the hook on that one again, 18 minutes left in this game. They have a corner. That scares me. It's bounced in our box. It falls to Suarez and Machado makes the best save of the match. He's kept it out. I take it all back. He's the best goalkeeper in the world. Did we swap him out for a different Machado at half time? We might need to do some more though. It's another corner. This kind of sustained pressure for them is adding up. A Jao Felix smashes it in and he makes it 5-4. I don't want to say it's been good football, but it's not been boring football. It's been entertaining, for better or for worse. There's been nine goals. Defence, not great for either team. I was about to make a change, but there's another highlight. For the first time in this game, we find ourselves behind. This is the true test of character. Can we fight back? Frank Abir to Martinez. He's looking for a hat-trick of assists now. Pablo, beat shows through. What is, what is happening? I'm losing my mind. This is one of the most mad games of Football Manager I've ever seen. I mean, no matter what happens, I'm happy with this performance. We've given it a go and then some. Kabir brings it forward to Martinez, plays inside to Pablo, gives it wide to Bicho, who's slipping on in. He's had a knock for half the game. He's also been one of our best performers for half this game. Oh my word, there's 10 minutes left. Could, could, we, could we win it? I mean, I should probably make some subs. For fresh legs. Pablo Torre's a bit tired. Let's bring in Mbuku. You know what, Bicho, you've had a good game, but I'm going to bring in Cabanz on to play Trequatista. I know that my scouts or my staff say he's not a good Trequatista. He, he is a good Trequatista. They're just lying. What? Below average? Wrong. Incorrect. He's going to prove it today. He hasn't got very long to prove it, to be fair. But there's time. There's three minutes left, and we have the ball. Frank Kabir. He's got his gloves on. He loves the cold. It's tackled by Koke, but it falls to Mbuku. The subs involved here. It's Kabanzon. I mean, he had a chance to prove the point. He puts it wide of the post. 
And from that, into another highlight right away. I mean, if they go up the other end and score, we are going to rue that missed chance. Koke with it. Brought into the middle. Oh, it's Yannick Carrasco at the bat post. To make it 6-5. I mean, we've tried. We've given it a good go. I don't know what to say. It's just been a bizarre game from start to finish. Should I be happy with it? I mean, if you if you want to give your one-word descriptor for this match down in the comments, Algorithm Ultras, I'm summoning you now. Down in the comments, one word to describe this match. I think it's over. I don't want to sound defeatist, but it is going to end 6-5. I am mean, Beecho has had a very good game. Mahika's got two as well. I mean, we all know where this game was lost, and it was this own goal. I, I still don't know how, how to put it into words, how I feel about that. Okay, so after one of the most bonkers games I've had in Football Manager this year, sadly, we are out the Copa del Rey. But we've had fun doing it, and at the very least, we've shown that we can do it against better teams. We can play some quite good football. We can go kind of toe-to-toe -to -toe with them. That is hopefully now going to spur us on into this second half of the season, where I do really want to see us try and fight for a, a playoff spot. I feel like that, at this point, has to be the minimum expectation. Of course, we've got a fair few players leaving the club, um, including Cedric, so there could be some money to reinvest. I imagine when you're next here, there is going to be a new player or two. So I hope to see you guys for that. Of course, no uploads on Sundays anymore, so I'll see you guys in a couple of days' time. I, I hope you're going to be able to you know, manage without me for 24 hours. You'll be okay. It's going to be fine. But anyway, guys, that is going to wrap up everything from me today. One of the most bonkers live commentary matches you're probably going to see in Football Manager. 6-5 against Atletico Madrid. Oddly proud of the boys for that performance. Hopefully, we can take that forward now into the league. In terms of when we're going to be back, we'll see how things play out. We're going to have a youth intake happening sometime in March. You can see this season goes kind of late into June now. Um, so... We'll see, we'll see what's happening. I imagine we'll be back. There may be a youth intake. There may be some exciting stuff going on. One thing I can't promise you is that the next match is going to be anything like that last one. I think that was kind of once in a series what we've just experienced. I will see you guys again in a couple of days' time. If you've enjoyed today's video, do drop a like on it. Appreciate the love and support as always. And until next time, it is me, Jack, and I'll talk to you guys in a bit. I'm out.